Welcome to this special online worship. As we prepare for this coming Holy Week, may we reflect on God's love and grace. I'm Rick Peckman, Ministry Coordinator here at Detroit Lakes New York Methodist Church. On behalf of the pastors, Gary and Deborah, the staff and the congregation, and myself, greetings. We come together this week using our scripture, music, and stories. Let us remember that Jesus came to earth to bring us healing and joy, and to lead us back home to God. We'll begin our worship with song. And now the call to worship. Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. We gather with followers from throughout the centuries who have come to welcome Jesus. We join crowds from many different places, shouting with joy for the King who enters Jerusalem. If we were silent, the stones would shout out, let us raise our voices with all who joyfully praise God for the powerful deeds we have seen.
bright dawn in majesty, your last and fiercest strife is nigh. The Father waits upon his throne. Await his own appointed son. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. Right on, right on, in majesty. Story for All Ages. Oh, I've been anxious to read this story to you guys. I got this way last year, but a year ago and wasn't able to read it. But now for Holy Week, it's so appropriate. He is Risen. Rocks tell the story of Easter. It was created by Patty Rokas. Uh, she went out and found all these rocks and created the story. It's, I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. He is Risen. Rocks tell the story of Easter. Jesus loves me. Aren't these just awesome? Jesus came to earth to bring us healing and joy and to lead us back home to God. The last week of his mortal life was the most important week ever. Many people celebrate him as the Savior. But some people wanted to kill him. One friend betrayed, betrayed him. Before Jesus died, he taught his friends important lessons at his Last Supper. Love and serve one another, one another. Eat and drink in remembrance of me. Then he prayed in the garden, taking upon himself all our pains and sor sorrows so we can let them go. Look at all those. Jesus willingly gave his life on the cross. He paid the price for our sins to rescue us and bring us home. He was buried in a tomb. After three days, Jesus came back to life. We will all live again because he conquered death. Alive again, Jesus visited his friends. He asked his friends to share the good news. Jesus went to heaven. He promised to come back. Jesus did that all for me and for you. How will you show your love for Jesus? He is risen. Rocks tell the story of Easter. Blessings.
Please join me in our prayer of confession. O oh God, we confess that we love a parade. Our hearts thrill to the spectacle. But we fail often to see the sadness on the face of the Savior. Our shouts block out his sorrow. He comes to us as our Savior, but we have difficulty understanding that this week. We might join Peter to deny his presence and run. Forgive us, Lord. Call us to turn our lives to you, see the needs of others, reach out in faith, and bear witness to your good news of saving love. Heal our hearts and give us courage. We ask in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Our lesson this morning is from the book of Mark. It's chapters 1 through 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Beth Hagi and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying this colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he, then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. When he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany, with the 12. From the book of Luke, chapter 19, verses 37 through 40. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. Grace and peace to you from God our Creator and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you for uh, participating in this morning's Palm to Passion service. And I hope that you're enjoying the wonderful springtime weather that we have enjoyed all week long, except for one or two days. I don't really know when this happened in terms of how old our oldest son was, but I remember the event other than the time frame pretty well. I remember that we had gone to a parade in Jamestown where we were serving at the time, and it is somewhat infamous for its parades, as many small towns are. It was long before it uh, began to have a series of white buffalo born in that community, and uh, so the parade did not have that aspect to it, but it did have several large pieces of equipment, tractors and fire trucks of every color, shape, and size, and there were clowns and all their get-up, and there were multitudes of candy throwers. This particular parade was a child's delight. And as we stood among our friends and neighbors who were getting much enjoyment out of seeing the children around us, including Matt, as they were the parade, we frequently would say to our children, calling them by name, did you see? Matt, did you happen to see that? Wasn't that neat? And we'd point out one thing after another. Matt, not to be outdone, would poof out his chest and say, and did you see me wave? Matt did not know it, but unwittingly he was repeating a, a quote from Jesus Christ Superstar. It is sung by the Palm Sunday crowd, and they say, Christ, you know that we love you. Did you see that I waved? Parades have a way of stirring up our emotions and releasing us for just a moment or two from our inhibitions. We wave, we shout, we enjoy all of the hubbub. We might even forget for a moment that the candy has been thrown out, still in its package, of course, uh, in such wonderful amounts that even as adults, we take a piece and eat it during the parade. We wave whatever we're holding in our hands, whether it's our hats or our caps or a brochure that somebody has passed to us or a map. Parades just bode excitement. Most people love parades, and I'm one of those that does. We cannot seem to wait to see whoever is turning around the corner on the parade route. Is it a parade um, piece of clo a float? Is it a, a parade band? What is it? And we get very excited. 
even if it's a mounted horse and rider with somebody scooping up the debris behind them. In that parade long ago, when Jesus was the one coming into Jerusalem, there was a lot of shouting and running about, I imagine. The crowd stripped their outer garments off and laid them on the donkey and spread them on the road. Now there is no manual of directions for that. There was no required rehearsal, but there seemed to be no hesitation about giving up their outer garments. No wondering, no debate as to whether there might be a less expensive way to show love and respect to the one who was coming into Jerusalem. Jesus, you know, that I love you. Did you see me wave? You know, I have a confession to make this morning. In all of the years that I've been professionally involved in the church, Palm Sunday has always been my favorite Sunday of the year. When we were dividing up who was going to preach Easter and Palm Sunday and Good Friday and whatnot, I asked for this particular assignment. I absolutely love watching worshipers march in the Palm Sunday Parade. I actually love seeing children kind of fuss with one another as they hold their palm branches. I rejoice in our faces as we march into congregational singing, waving our palms. I even enjoyed it when one of our sons at Jamestown First took his palm and got the little girl, her name was Amy, and they were very best of friends, but he used it as a saber as he marched into congregational singing. After all, anything happens in a parade, I guess, and Palm Sunday is the closest thing that the church has. Now, most often in the church, we tend to stay underwhelmed because we refuse to be overwhelmed by the incredible good news of the gospel. Mistakes of passion can be overcome far easier than the sins of inertia. And so, when Palm Sunday comes around and the parade unleashes at the beginning of the worship, I just want to encourage things a little bit and say to the church, seize the moment. Even if it makes you late or truant for something else, enjoy the celebration. There was a little man by the name of Zacchaeus and when he heard that one that he had longed to see, Jesus by name, was coming into Jericho, he shut down his tax office and climbed a tree. That day changed his whole life. Jesus asked to come to his house and he talked with him and Zacchaeus decided that he not only would not cheat anyone anymore, but he would begin to repay the amount many times over. That had been stolen. Christ, you know that I love you. Can you see me wave? Remember Martha and Mary? Martha was so intent on keeping the meal on schedule that she missed an unrepeatable opportunity to sit with Jesus and hear him. Do not apologize, my friends, for spontaneous celebrations particularly not in the church, particularly not when we can share our joy for one another, but more importantly, for the Lord, particularly not when love is involved. Soren Kierkegaard used to tell a story of geese who were sequestered in a yard. Every seventh day, these geese paraded to a corner, a particular corner of the yard, and their most eloquent orator would get up on the fence. He would speak of the wonders of geese that day. He told of the exploits of their four parents who dared to mount up on wings and fly all over the sky. He spoke of the mercy of the creator who had given geese wings and the instinct to fly. And this deeply impressed the geese who would nod their heads solemnly. All of this they did, at least weekly one thing they did not do, they did not fly, for the corn they were being given was good and the barnyard was secure. However passing it was, Palm Sunday provided the people who believed in Jesus or who were captivated at least by Jesus with a chance to fly. 
They saw the Son of God coming in humility on that donkey into Jerusalem. Christ, you know that I love you. Have you seen me wave? Did you see me wave? Now, often Palm Sunday sermons end with just the celebration, but I can't end that sermon here. Worship attendance alone in most congregations indicate that many Christians are happy to worship when there are poinsettias and palm branches and lilies in the chancel or even a mum or two bypassing the ashes of Ash Wednesday and the nails of passion. It is wrong, my friends, doctrinally and experientially to avoid anything but joy. The cross is central. It is crucial to our faith. Suffering, death, resurrection are inseparable in the scriptures. Paul alludes to that when he says in the scriptures, I might share in his suffering, becoming like him in his death, that if possible, I might also attain the resurrection from the dead. No cross no crown. There is no ouchless Christianity. Ours is not all a parade. We do have to go to Gethsemane. We have to go to Golgotha. We have to go to the cross. After all, what can the dawn mean to one who has not endured the night? What can restoration mean to those who have never suffered, suffered separation? What can resurrection mean to those who have not, in some sense, died? Today we wave to the one coming into Jerusalem. Next Sunday is Easter, and the days in between will not bring victory, but hardship as we remember the story, the full story. Easter is not indiscriminately radiant. It is not some portable happy ending that can be hitched to just one story or any story. It will have little meaning to those of us who lightly crash the celebration or who have little understanding of the passion, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And so I welcome you to worship this week somewhere, someplace. And if you're not able, if you are at home and you are stuck there, Read the scriptures, the events that took place in the Gospels. If you are in Detroit Lakes and can worship with us physically in our sanctuary, I welcome you to Wednesday night service at 615 when we will observe Holy Communion. Or I invite you to come to the Good Friday service at 1215 Friday as Doug Schultz dramatizes the events of Good Friday from the viewpoint of the executioner. I welcome you to the glorious resurrection of Easter morning when we worship together in our sanctuary at 8.15 and 10.15, or when we are able to at least participate in our living rooms with a virtual worship service at 8.15. What might we say to the one who comes? Jesus, you know I love you. Did you see that I waved? Yes, he might reply. Did you see me suffer and die for you? Easter is going to be ready when you are. But no cross, no crown. I look forward to your involvement in the scriptures this week. Your involvement personally at a service of worship or in this wonderful ability we have to share the worship with you on YouTube. Thanks be to God for the joy of this day as well as for passion that will precede Easter. Amen. Amen.
Please keep the following people in your prayers this week. Betty, Jan, Judy, Nancy, Mitch, Britt, and their unborn baby girl, Charlotte, Gail and Paul, Jane, and Dennis and Shirley. This week we celebrate with the following people. Happy birthday to Bob, Sherry, Sandy, Natalie, Jenny, Brock, Allie, Jordan, and Mary Lou. As we come to our time of prayer this morning, I invite you to spend a few minutes in quiet, sharing what you want to share with your Lord, who will hear you. Let us begin in silence, and then I will continue. And we will then follow that with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we have seen you in a variety of ways come into Jerusalem in the story of Jesus Christ. We thank you, O oh Lord, that you are entering again into our lives in this specific and wonderful way, just as you enter into the sufferings of the world. We trust, O oh Lord, that you see and know the struggles and the pain of our lives and of this world. We dare to share your desire for a world that better reflects your reign. And we ask, O oh Lord, for new eyes to see your intentions. As we follow Jesus into Jerusalem, we ask, O oh Lord, that you would upset our expectations and surprise us with new hope for justice and new life here on earth. We thank you, O oh Lord, for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, into our lives, and we pray that those who are struggling in some sense would experience his great love for them. We pray, O oh Lord, for the world's leadership, for those who guide their nations, including our own president. We pray for all who are making decisions on our behalf. We ask, O oh Lord, that they might speak to one another, that they might care for their people, that we might learn to live in justice and love. We also pray, O oh Lord, for those who have been impacted in such a severe way by the pandemic that has cost so many their lives. We pray for others who are experiencing hardship, mental health concerns, when they watch their bodies begin to go downhill rather than be strong. We pray, O oh Lord, for those who are grieving especially for our world has had much loss in it. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you will work within the heart and soul and bodies of those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We ask, O oh Lord, that as we anticipate the joy of Easter, that you will make that joy palpable in our lives and in our souls, and that we will experience the joy of your great gift of sacrifice for us and for the world at other times and places than just Easter morning in a sanctuary or online. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, remembering the prayer that your son taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. 
Tonight, the Lenten book study led by Pastor Gary will be held via Zoom at 6.30 p.m. This is the last class in that study. The Tuesday morning Bible study group will meet at 9.30 a.m. in the fellowship hall. Wednesday night at 6.15 p.m., we will meet in person for a Holy Wednesday service. Everyone is welcome to attend this service. It will be traditional and will include Holy Communion. Please call to reserve a spot if you're coming to that service. Following worship on Wednesday night at 7 p.m., the confirmands will meet with the pastors here at the church. The gentlemen will meet via Zoom on Thursday morning at 9. Reva's Bible study group will meet Thursday morning at 10 here in the church in the fireside room. And everyone is welcome to our Good Friday worship service at 12.15 p.m. here at the church. Please call and reserve your space for that service if you wish to attend. Your offerings can continue to be given by dropping them off with Beth in the office, by mailing them to the church at 885 Pembina Trail, or by giving online through our website at dlumc.org. We thank you for your continued financial support. And now will you please join with me in our prayer of thanksgiving. We respond to your love, O God, with love and gratitude. We're touched by the story of the one you sent to save us. In gratitude and thanks, we dedicate this offering and our lives to the world you care so much about. Amen. We began this morning by experiencing the joy of a parade, and now we end with a glimpse of the passion to come. From the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, verses 10 to 11. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. Let us receive the benediction. 
We ask, O oh Lord, that you will bless our lives in powerful ways. We know that we have gone in the service from Hosanna to crucify. It has been a long and painful journey. And go forth, send us forth, knowing that the story does not end here. The ending of the story is to be continued. And so, O oh Lord, we ask that we might go with God.